maybe yes yeah and how's my uh, voice level is this is good or yeah yeah you sound great okay um and then i need to figure out what episode number this is yeah <laughs> god <laughs> let me pull up your podcast in my app 85 oh oh this is this is this is actually going to get posted next weekend so we're only oh. a week we're only a week out i'm oh, traveling perfect. to like i'm traveling to dallas uh yeah well so i'm in pa next weekend and then dallas um the f- two weekends after that so i'm just kind of trying to pre-record a bunch uh yeah. to to get to get stuff you know in the it's kind of in the hopper so i don't have to worry about it while i'm down there Absolutely. um so all right i'll go ahead and get started um, actually, right, cool. I'll probably just keep this in because I don't know how to do video editing at all. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Welcome to Blackbird episode number 85. My name is James, and today I am pleased to be joined once again by one of my very favorite podcasters in the entire world, Conrad. Hi, Conrad, welcome back to the show. Thanks. Thanks for having me back. And I, you know, it's funny that you messaged me because I was thinking to myself, I was like, you know, what? I want to have James on because I, I feel like I feel like you're representative of a person who is i don't want to say you're stuck in two worlds because that's absurd am, that's an assumption i am no but, no no dude oh, okay that's the thing you uh you hit the nail on the head and that's what that's what people tell me all the time like uh that uh what, one of my friends jacob he he said like if you want to know james's opinion ask him for it but then ask him again in five minutes because it's probably gonna change. <laughs> like i'm constantly constantly flexing right. and, and fluxing which is a way to be um but i'll tell you i'll finish with my theory you can tell yeah. me if i'm completely wrong or if I'm, I'm kind of near it, I feel like you're somebody who, like, there's the scientific method, and it's like, and it's applied to everything, right? But then there's these weird things happening, and you're like, wait, what, what, what aspects of reality <laughs> oh. are, are bendable? Yeah, I don't know. And then yeah. it's like, and then you, and you view the whole scene from that, and it's like, I, I go through it too, um, because I have so many friends, for example, that, uh, that you know, they're just convinced, one thousand, a million percent convinced that the earth is flat, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And if you, if you engage them with it, it like, it's good. Like if like you go on Twitter right now, I guarantee you anyone out there go on Twitter, just type in, don't even do a hashtag. Just, just type in flat earth. And you're going to come across these long threads of all like people just arguing with each other, like incessantly mm-hmm. and no one's wrong. And everyone's right. It's just fascinating to me <laughs> that like people, people just view reality and we get into these like these tunnels that just have to be true but what's weird is especially these days it's like not only is that tunnel there but that tunnel somehow starts to apply to every aspect of reality and you only start to view you view every subject be it like geopolitical be it religious spiritual be it scientific through like that tunnel of perspective and it's very fascinating to me and i always feel like i'm trying to like palate cleanse myself and get as much um as much like information as possible with one perspective from all the perspectives and it's interesting because sometimes it's humbling because sometimes i think things and then i see like a really well constructed argument of something that is against what i was thinking and i'm like okay maybe i don't have it all figured out <laughs> i know man that's the thing like i went i went for so i used to be like conservative and you know religious and all that stuff um yeah. I'm, I, and I might be becoming religious again. I don't really know. I don't know where I'm at right now. Um, yeah. But then, so then I, you know, I, I found this guy. His name's Thad Russell, and I, I love him to death. He's going to be on the show actually here pretty soon. Um, he's a historian and kind of a philosopher and just just, just sort of like a, almost like a renaissance man. He can, he can do a lot of stuff. Um, but uh, he describes himself as a postmodernist. He's a huge fan of, of uh, Michel Foucault um, and... Um, I, from like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know Foucault. Like I, I've heard what Thad says about him and I've heard what right. people like Jordan Peterson and so, so on say about him and they say very different things about him. Um, but one thing that Thad says is that he's agnostic on everything. He doesn't even know if reality is real and right. I have, or, or that reality exists. Um, mm. so I, for a very long time, I mean, like a couple of years at least, uh, which is a very long time for me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I did. I, I was like in that. I was kind of in that in that realm where I was questioning whether reality is, exists. Um, I think now it's probably more like reality is unknowable. Mm. Um, like it does. Like something exists, uh, right. but I don't know that we can accurately represent it in our brains, and certainly not accurately, you know, communicate it to one another. 
um, mm. because even even if I say you know thing A to you, what your brain is going to process is thing A through the filter of Conrad, which is yeah, different gonna, from the yeah. filter of James. All my trauma, all my wins and losses, yeah. all my experiences, and then I'm going to take what you said, and then I'm going to regurgitate it in a way that fits around the, the mini universe of myself. And then mm-hmm. I'm going to be like, why don't you see it like me? Or wait a second. Yeah, I, I totally feel that. So that's why I was thinking of asking you on, because I feel like you have like, um, and I could be way around. This is based on posts, things I've seen, things I've heard about you. Um, it seems like you have the ability to have a foot in a lot of camps, yeah. right? Hold the position, but also not get stuck and stay. And I think that's a, I think that's important for anyone myself. Like anytime I find myself not trying to like be in a continual flow state in terms of just like, I don't want to get stuck onto this linchpin. I don't want to get stuck into this post. I don't want to get stuck here in the water. I want to keep flowing. Right. I just want to keep moving because it's really easy when you start to get stuck, at least for me, uh, when you get to start stuck in certain points of view and you find heroes in those communities and things of that nature, um, you get you get you get very close to starting to make idols yeah and then, i am and then, yeah i'm super prone to to heroes that's that's one of my big things is i had to avoid and i mean anybody who's listened to this show knows that i have people who influence me um probably more than they should sure. uh well no then again the fact that i recognize that i'm probably like that's probably some negative self-talk right there um i don't i don't really, i don't really believe in should to begin with but uh like there's names that there's names that come up on this show and especially like when i'm a, a guest on other people's shows um because you know i mean when i'm when i'm being interviewed usually they're going to ask me like who are my influences or what's my what's my yeah. journey been or whatever and so i'll have these people up on pedestals and they're people who now um you know a year or two or whatever later or even you know 10 or 12 years later uh who I don't, I don't listen to it all. Or if right. I do listen to them, I realize, Hey, this, this guy is a complete and total jerk. Um, <laughs> yeah, he has, he has, he has good things to say, but I certainly don't want to emulate him. Um, right. But the thing is like, I did emulate him. I, I would, uh, I'm thinking of one person in particular, and I'm not going to name him because his name comes up on the show all the freaking time. And everybody knows who I'm talking about. If they've listened even once, um, <laughs> uh, evil Knievel. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's the thing. So evil Knievel was, was a huge influence on the way I thought and the way I see the world and all that. And I still, he still is, but he's just, he's just an asshole. He's divisive. He's, right. um, he's, he, he's not a, he's not a peaceful spirit. His whole brand is built about built around, uh, like, um, you should have listened to me a year ago. I told you so. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's just a jerky thing. That's a jerky way to be. Oh, was um, I was I right? Was I right just now? Did I? Was it really evil? Can evil? No, but uh, that's okay, what we'll call I'm about to say. I'm about to say. <laughs> Holy shit! That would have been amazing. I thought I just. I was like, I I need to start a one of the like. Remember what was that lady? Lady Cleo or whatever. She had that oh, one yeah. hundred number. Miss Miss yeah, yeah Miss Cleo. She Miss Cleo. Oh, yeah. She, oh, she's a the fortune teller. You should <laughs> yeah. see. Do you have do you have people like her on your show? Do you have any like fortune tellers or psychics? Oh yeah, um, but the, you know things get rebranded. Mm-hmm. So just just like yeah, I, I was also raised in um, well, I was raised in a conservative evangelical environment, backlashed against it, um, and then then I sort of had to like get back into the journey, and my own personal journey of like reframe. I'll give you a perfect example. Last night, right? I was, I was screaming out. I wasn't quite screaming out as intensely as I had in the past. But ever, I don't know any of your listeners out there. Like, do you, does anyone have a tendency, or, or do you have a tendency, to, like, say you have a really bad stomach ache, you're having like food poisoning or something, and you just want it to end, and then suddenly all your preconceived notions of of, of the nature of reality go out the window, and you'll you'll run towards the closest magic that you know. So in my case, it's like my religious programming falls back into like, God, if you heal this stomach, <laughs> if you heal this stomach <laughs> injury right now, I will give my life to you and I will serve you. Yeah. Ever have any of those moments? <laughs> uh, no. Well, that's the thing. I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not opposed to prayer. Like, uh, right. so that, that's not, that's not really, that's not really relatable to me, I guess. Um, okay. I have, I Although I haven't, I haven't really prayed like, I, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't call what you just called religious programming. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, that? it is, it is, it is religious programming. That's true. Um, I don't know if it's, uh, I mean, it's just funny how quickly it, like I can go from having a well-constructed idea of who I am. Yeah. Right. And I, and that's how I operate. That's how I present myself. 
but then like in like a, a tiny moment of extreme pain suddenly that's all at the window mm -hmm. and i'm just trying to solve the problem with everything that's that i've been had or given my whole life and i like i'll throw I'll, I'll do that i'll do this i'll do that i mean satan if you're listening if you're gonna get rid of this stomach maybe <laughs> i'll go with you like let's get rid of this because this hurts yeah. you know <laughs> it's just funny how oh. i me personally i can jump back into the um the idea of healing from like a, a higher being uh -huh. just to get over this little mini hump. And then when it ends, I'm like, Oh, back to me. <laughs> I <think laughs> Tr tricked you. <laughs> we might've talked about this the last time you were here. Um, I'm such a materialist that the idea of uh, turning to like a magical fixative for right. something like that just doesn't even occur to me. So that's what I mean. Like, so yeah. th that's, so that's, that's what, so, okay. So here's, here was the thought I was having is if somebody who let's just say somebody was raised in a family let's just say atheist like they're raised in an atheist family that was like part of their you know just the way they viewed reality and then let's say later on in life they they switch it up and they go into um, some sort of spiritual religious sort of um, frame of existing and then when they get that stomach ache, I wonder if there's people out there who are like, no, there's nothing that they, they go, they revert back to their original state of being. They're like, back to the void. This is all meaningless. Just end it. I, I'm not real anyways. You know, yeah. I just wonder. I wonder, like, because I think people are most honest when they have an extreme stomach ache. And whatever yeah. that honesty is, it comes out. <laughs> I had, yeah, that, I had to cut a meeting short a few weeks, well, not, it was a couple of months ago, I guess, uh, because of a stomach ailment like i'm not going to get into too much detail but it was the most sure. pain i've ever been in in my life yeah. and like i went in the bathroom and it hurt even worse like it just it just got worse and worse and worse um yeah. and i no what did i do i didn't i, I certainly didn't pray but yeah. the thing is i didn't pick i didn't pick up my phone either which is what i'm normally doing when i'm in the bathroom you know mm. like i'm sitting there like <laughs> yeah. gripping like just oh my god like <laughs> and, yeah. whatever you have to do just do it yeah um <laughs> So enough about that shit. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, literally. <laughs> um, talk about talk about psychedelics. You wanted to you wanted to you wanted to bring that up, and we didn't get into it too deeply the last time you were here, and it's something that I'm yeah. keenly interested in. Uh, you still haven't tried? I still haven't tried. Oh, it's been. I think we recorded like what in the summer? It was June of last year. June. Okay. And like, I've had it. I've had one. I've had, one, I've had <laughs> at least one more episode. I've had at least one more episode that was yeah. uh, directly like that's all we talked about for an hour, hour and a half. Yeah. Um, so was that the episode where the dude was really high? I saw that tweet. No. He had like a guy <laughs> no. that was just like chaos. That was, so. that was just last week. No, he, that was that okay. was that was my boy Tommy. Um, okay. No, not Tommy. Sorry, not Tommy. Brian. Brian yeah. and Tommy. I get them mixed up because they're both in like far corners of the United States. And uh, they just kind of remind me of one another. Yeah. Uh, Cheech and Chong. No. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, Brian, Brian was super high and like his internet kept cutting out and stuff like that. It was, that's a killer I know, combo. I know yeah. my producer, my producer yelled at me. He was like, Oh dude, you, you can't send me this shit anymore. Like, <laughs> so psychedelics, you haven't tried them yet. Um, what is the, what is the primary the if you can if you have you isolated the primary reason why you just won't do it like there's that hesitancy still? well i mean the main thing is i don't i don't know where to find them like that's the that's yeah. that i i don't have a whole lot of friends who are into stuff like that like in real sure. life i've got i've yeah. got friends from work and yeah that's about mushrooms it. anyone in anyone in uh, minnesota right yeah 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 anyone in the minnesota area just email James. No, you'll get like a thousand likes. <laughs> I know. There's so many people online that are probably like, who knows? But um, okay. Well, so, and then, so, so the other thing is though, like I, I, I want to be in the right state of mind and yeah. the right physical state right now. And you know, this was not the case last June, obviously, but you know, right now, yeah. if I wanted to go like on a walk in the woods, which is what one guy um, suggested doing, um, yeah. I would need to put on snowshoes and I don't own snowshoes. I don't, I just don't spend much time outside in yeah. the months <laughs> of either. November through yeah. March. Um. So, then, and then, and then, I guess my follow-up question would be: Is which one is the one that you feel would be the like the first venture that you would want to uh, pursue in terms of a specific psychedelic? Mushrooms for sure. Mushrooms. I think that's a. I, I mean, I'm a thousand agreement with that choice. Um, oh. I've only ever had uh, great experiences with mushrooms, even at different levels, mm -hmm. like microdosing versus like, I guess a heroic trip or whatever, Terrence McKenna style. Um, the, you know, every, every single trip for me has always been distinctly different. 
Um, but I'm also a realist in the sense that I recognize that like the mushroom itself isn't the answer. Mm. The experience itself isn't the answer. And there's not even necessarily an answer, but it's an experience that gives you an opportunity to just shift perspectives a little bit. And in that, there might be something in the long form when you come back to a sober state that you determine that you no longer want to do or change or try something new. Like, I, I think it's, um, I think it's just, a, I think it's a medicine ultimately. And, you know, medicines can be abused and used, you know, I mean, just look at pharma. So just like anything else in the world, just like we were talking about the start uh, about like these posts that we can get stuck onto and not, uh, and, you know, and getting out of that flow state, psychedelics can become an idol. The mushroom can become an idol. So not that's not like a good sales pitch, but even if you go in, A, you will come out. I have no doubt about that in my mm. mind. And B, when you come out, you might never do it again, right? And that's why it's, um, well, I do call it a medicine, and yes, it is a drug, I guess. There is a part of, still a part of me that doesn't even want to call it a drug because like a drug to me is like you do it, and then 10 seconds later, when whatever is done is done, like that desire is still there to do it again. Whereas some people do a psychedelic once, they have a good experience, and they decide that they never need to do it again. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, um, I don't know, it's been, it's, it's been a while. I don't know what, what, what constitutes a while, but I haven't taken a mushroom in a, in a long time. I would like to. I'm in Hawaii, they're everywhere, so it's really easy. Yeah. So it just comes down to laziness at this point. Um, but yeah, I've only, I've only, I love the, I love the mushroom. And anyone out there, it's weird. Like anyone out there who's who's listening who's done them. For me, and I don't know if this is a shared experience. I hate to use the word returning home because it sounds so cliche. But like it's weird. Like I go into like a state of mind that just feels really good, and it feels familiar, and it feels mm -hmm. in a certain way right. Not necessarily like it has to be a permanent feeling, but it just it's a really a beautiful experience. And then I have had what would be considered scary trips or bad trips. But again, the old cliche does apply there where when you come out of that trip and even in the middle of that bad trip, your personal perspective of how you're understanding and choosing to experience it plays a massive role right. on whether or not the bad trip is actually a really good trip. You know, it's like, okay, during this trip, I, I encompass the role of Darth Vader. You know, I spent a few <laughs> years on the dark side but at the end of the day, I did throw Palpatine down, you know, the bottom of the Death Star and save the day. It wasn't Anakin. He gets all the credit. What's going on here? It was really Darth Vader that, that ended the Empire. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, I don't know if that explains anything. That just came it, no, mind. it kind of does. I mean, it's just like taking the <laughs> taking the, the, the dark side and making it um, the... I don't know. In the Bible, it's what the devil, what the devil meant for evil. God has turned to good, yeah. or whatever. So, that's the that's the that's the that's the folk quotation. So when you there. said you might be going back into some sort of religious framework, what is what is the definition of religion for you? What does that constitute? Um, I don't I don't know. Uh, so I, I'm I I would call myself Catholic. Uh, mm -hmm. I so if if anything, it would be that I'm not. Um, that is the like organized religion that makes the most sense to me. And it's the most, mm. well, and it makes the most sense um, of uh, from a Western standpoint, it makes the most sense. Let's put it that way. Um, yeah. Not including obviously the traditional North American communities that lived here right. uh, prior to European. You're, you're talking about, but, you're talking about the, the colonialist I'm talking, I'm talking, expansion. I'm talking, I'm talking about Europe. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's be real. Europe. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, my, 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 like, outside, like, my mom was raised Catholic, mm -hmm. and she rebelled against it. Um, she went out, I'm, uh, for, she's from New York, um, upstate New York, not New York City, and she went out west during, like, the hippie movement, and she doesn't talk about it. I've been very, like, I've been very, like, I've been able to get small, the only time that I was ever to get any clear answers from her in regards to like, what were you doing? Like you, you were, you obviously were in like that movement. Like you don't ever talk about it. It's really weird. Um, and the only time that she ever opened up to me about it was on my first acid trip. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and I got to call her. Cause one thing about if you, if you like one thing about that uh, drug is uh, you shouldn't have your phone 
necessarily around <laughs> you because you'll start messaging people. You'll get yourself in all sorts of conundrums you, if you're not careful. <laughs> do you mean spe- specifically acid or any psychedelic? I don't know. Probably. I mean, the the more experience you have, like to me, the more you figure out like how to not how yeah. to navigate that stuff. But in this case, for the first time, yeah. So it was like I was in extreme, like open, honest state without fear. Um, sorry for that. That's I fine. always make sure that, that I hate when like the little noises come up and I just did that to you. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah. So then I called her. I was like, this is like, I did it. You know, I did this and I feel, and that's when I said, I feel like, like I explained everything I just said to you about like you rebelled against Catholicism. You went out West. You had to have been a hippie. Although if she did find quote unquote, find Jesus from a new perspective, eventually out West. Mm-hmm. And now she became, well, she, since that day forward she was like a i guess like a holy roller <laughs> um but when you say yeah, holy roller so, do, you, do you mean like pentecostal like uh, yeah pentecostal yeah i was yeah. raised in a pentecostal environment for sure um and i went to it and i actually went to a pentecostal bible college out of high school because i so, thought i was going to be a pastor did you like yeah. speak in tongues and stuff did you did you have the charisms maybe you know, but a lot of that is, is like how much of the mental aspect, like how much are you? I mean, like I love like one of my guilty pleasures is uh, Benny Hinn. Are you familiar with Benny Hinn? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And like his old YouTube videos. And you just like he's just waving his hand and people are like falling left and right. Mm-hmm. And he's hilarious, though, on stage because he'll like t- like he'll like hit people. And if like they don't react, he'll do it again, like a little harder. It's kind of funny. Yeah. I-, I really enjoy the people that don't respond because then he gets like really violently aggressive with them. I'm like, what has happened here <laughs> that thousands of people are just bought into yeah. this? It's a it's an amazing it's, a, it's an amazing investigation into like human minds when they're like in a in a small isolated bubble and we all and they all start like merging and believing the same story that is taking mm-hmm. place and then like as an outside observer you're like whoa like how is this happening and i don't think that's that obviously clearly in my opinion in the last couple of years uh, isn't re- is it doesn't resort just to uh you know religion and yeah and, and all that's it. i think that's everything so benny hinn's a guilty pleasure and uh yeah i have a I have a, no, I don't want to talk about that here because it's kind of it's a project I'm working on. But, right. <laughs> but we'll keep, when, we'll, when the time is right, when we'll the time see, is right, we'll, yeah. we'll keep following you to find out. He's more amused. About that. He's amused <clears throat> of mine, and I'm. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Uh, did you did you ever watch Robert Tilton back in the day? You you're younger than I am, so you might not right. remember him. Robert, I know the name. I've probably seen some, but that's the dude that's from that same cloth, right? Yeah, yeah. He would yeah. he would he would hold up his hand and tell you to put his hand, put your hand on the screen right yeah. over his hand, and he would. He would pray for you. Yeah. Uh, so I had those. I had those. So going back to Bible college, because that was the original question. Um, that was like part of like my, I guess I'd call it deprogramming, where I'm looking around and I, and I feel like I'm supposed to be speaking in tongues. I'm supposed to be mm. slain in the spirit, they call it, where like you physically can't move. You fall down. Someone catches you. Like there's like a weird high school sort of like peer pressure <clears throat> thing that comes in. It's like oh, you're not speaking in tongues. Well, there must be something, you know, it's just not the right time because there's something going on in your life that you haven't welcomed the Holy Spirit in and you need to, is there any sin in your life that you haven't dealt with? Is there secrets that you, you know, like that's the weird, it's very close in my opinion to, it's the same concept of like Scientology, which has been pretty like going clear and you have to go in there with your e-meter and you, and you have to be honest and you have to tell them all these dirty secrets and it's being recorded. And I'm like, and then even honestly, let's look like with the Catholicism, it's like, wasn't that the original CIA? Like everyone, <laughs> yeah. everyone was going to this one booth with these few powerful people and they were like, tell us your secrets. Like, how is that not the original like NSA? I, you know what I mean? Like, how do you control people? Have them by the balls because you think they think that like no one wants to be embarrassed that's the easiest way to control people i mean mm-hmm. that's what the mafia did so it <clears> does <throat> so i mean it just it seems like we live in this wash rinse repeat existence but it, like even when there's different variations when you break it down there's a lot of a squared plus b squared equals c squared at the end yeah. of the day just with a new flavor yeah well and now you know i mean it's it's the uh there's not so much a confessional i mean i i'm guessing that from what I understand, I've never, I've never done the the woke thing, but uh, apparently, yeah. like the they're they're bringing back struggle sessions, you know, where they're where they're airing their dirty laundry. 
Uh, oh no! This is at like DSA meetings or whatever. Whatever yeah. it is, I, I don't. I'm just not involved with that. But um, yeah. You know, I mean, there is definitely like witch hunt mentalities. Yes. I mean, anybody who's seen The Crucible knows. Like, I yeah, I saw Goody Hathaway uh, off dancing with the devil in the barn or whatever. And now it's just like you know, <laughs> hey, look at this person who's not wearing their mask right. I mean, it's the right. same exact thing. Yep, I agree. You know, think about like the Salem witch trials, for example. You have these Puritans mm. who they come over to the United States and they they're literally like 15 yards off of the Atlantic ocean. That's how far they've expanded into this new world. And just with that little bit of interaction with indigenous cultures and, you know, maybe there, there are some women like, Hey, let's burn some sage. <laughs> <laughs> just that little bit of freedom of expression through like a, a natural naturist, I guess, view of reality uh, was enough for uh, the Puritans to be like, "You're dying. We're burning you at the stake. We can't. We can't loosen the chains of control that much. Like that's all it took. Like you're 15 feet into the new world, and we're burning people at the stake. Really? That to me is a control issue." <laughs> Here, so you mentioned burning sage. Here's one thing that um, yeah. that worries me. Uh, so I don't know the reason that this happened, hmm. but. My, so my brother died um, in October of 2016. In October of 2017, we had a big, a big, uh, you know, party with all of his friends and all of our family friends and stuff. Is a big memorial anniversary thing, and my mom had they had this big dining room table. It's a really nice dining room table, and she had all these pictures of him and um, these little vases with those little. They're like kind of jelly beads that expand when you get put water in them. Yeah. Put them in water. Uh, she had those um, vases with like little fairy lights kind of strung in there. It was, it, was a little, it was nice. It was a little altar to my brother. It was, it was really cool looking. Yeah. Well, before this memorial party, she 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 burned sage throughout the house, and then we left and we come back and this chandelier. It's this black crystal. Apparently, it was like nineteen thousand dollars just for this light fixture had crashed down onto their dining room table, broke all the vases, all the picture frames, everything, wow. everything had uh, been shattered. There's water all over the floor. Um, and you know, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't say like, I know that it was because she saged the house without knowing what the hell she was doing right. or with wrong intentions or what, but like, it sure seems like it. Um, right. And so when I think of things like that, it makes me a little bit worried to get too deep into the spiritual world. Sure. Um, and in particular in my own version of that in my brain. Mm. Um, so I, I guess that's probably one of the reasons that I'm uh, reticent about trying psychedelics. Right. No, I get, I, yeah, no, I mean, there was, there's this, there's a distinct stopping point in my life in which there was a vast, um, shift in my brain in which I completely started to view reality from a new, like a different perspective. Mm -hmm. And it can most certainly be isolated down to my first psychedelic trip. There was an, there was a, there's a very clear and blatant transition of really most things top to bottom with me, you know, but <clears throat> to, to not speak in absolute terms, I'd say most of it was good like helpful for me and my journey personally. And so with the idea of psychedelics, again, I would never say you have to try it, right? But if it's circling your mind, like it's something you keep returning to, there's something going on there. In ter like, and, 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 you know, sometimes, you know, like I think of Joseph Campbell, you know, the, 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 ca the, the, the cave you fear to enter is the, ca is the cave you're supposed to, you know? I don't think that's the exact wording, but it's along those Close lines. Enough. And um, basically, the hero's journey. The hero's journey, you know, yeah. and the dark night of the soul. And there's a lot. There's lots of different ways to have dark night. I'll, I'll probably have one tonight, for all I know. But <laughs> but um, if it, if it's something that keeps circling around your orbit, and it's something that has captured your attention, there's probably something there. And how that plays out, I don't know. Maybe it's simply taking one small cap of a mushroom just to experience what a microdose feels like, mm -hmm. you know, who knows? But I don't know. I, I, 
I mean, if, if a year from now we do a podcast interview and you're still talking about psychedelics and you still haven't tried them, then I call bullshit on you. <laughs> <laughs> just at that point, you're just holding yourself back. But if a year from now, if you just, if you come on and say, you know, I decided not to do it and I don't really think about it, I'd believe mm. that too. Like I'm not like somebody's like, you need to do it or else you are a sinner, you know? <laughs> The other, so the other concern I have, and this is one that I've talked about on the show actually a lot, is that I don't, I don't want to, like, <clears throat> I'm scared to feel emboldened to make big life decisions. Mm. Um, the one of the guys that I had on, he like, and you know, obviously, I'm not, I'm probably not going to do this. Uh, yeah. But he went to South America. I forgot what which country it was. Um, and he did, you know, an ayahuasca ceremony oh, and yeah. came back and immediately quit his job, and right. like. So that's what happened to me. I don't, I don't, I don't <laughs> want to do that. Like, I mean, what if, like, you know, I, I have a, I have a good life. Like, I, I, yeah. I like my job. I'd, I, you know, I mean, obviously, I'm gonna want to quit my job eventually, so that, sure, um, I'm a little bit freer to travel and do the things that I really want to be doing. Um, and so, so I guess I'm kind of of two minds on this. Like, I, on one hand, I have a feeling that doing, doing mushrooms would probably make me a little bit more conscientious and and probably a lot more driven to actually meet the goals that I have rather Ooh. than rather than standing here and spinning my wheels. Yeah. You know, so I, I totally resonate with that. Um especially like the fact of um the um, the emboldening part to accomplish, uh -huh. you know, goals for self. I will say this about the psychedelic, at least for me. Um it, it will enhance that for sure in my opinion, like that would probably be what would happen for you. Like you, those those deep down rooted things that really like you want to do when you like when you look at does anyone I don't know if anyone listening do you ever like go into the bathroom and you look in the mirror and you just give yourself a nice long stare and you say who the fuck am I <laughs> am I the only one that does that but um yeah like so what what the like a mushroom for example does for me is it re it definitely reaffirms my true passions mm. and it puts to the forefront the reality that many of them i consistently have found over the years excuses rooted in fear to not pursue them but they're ultimately just excuses rooted in fear mm. and um for me what the psychedelic so i don't know if it was a rewriting of a neural path i don't know i don't fucking know but i do know this that i did become more proactive in living the life i wanted to live versus the life i thought i was supposed to live and that was a big when i talked about like the big transition that can clearly be related to the psychedelic experience that most certainly was probably like the big one that most certainly had to have been the big one because it's my life you know what <laughs> i'm not it's not your life it's not anyone else's life it's my life and that's um for a lot of people out there, I don't know. I mean, we, 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 at least for me and the way I was raised, and I was raised by loving people. Uh, but like the expectations, I don't know if it's upstate New York working like just nine to five mentality. And anyone out there, if you do that, it's great, you know. But for some reason, for my life, that no longer became acceptable. And what became acceptable was really chasing the unknown as an artist. And, if I end up, like you were saying, like you're afraid of quitting your job, like now in my brain, if I end up on the street, I don't care. <laughs> Maybe I'll change if that happens and I will care. Uh, but I just don't believe that's going to happen. I believe that I'm positioning myself in all sorts of, I don't know. It's, it's, um, it is, it's definitely like, so yeah, if there could be absolutely a major, like, I'm not going to lie to you and be like, yeah, that wouldn't happen to you. You want to quit. You could, it could. And if that's something that holds you back, then and maybe that's why subconsciously or consciously you're just like, nah, I'm gonna, I, you keep delaying yeah. it. But yeah, anyways, I don't going know. To the, I, going to that cave though. Like that's the, that's the thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. How, uh, so was mushrooms the first thing that you ever did? No, no. What was it? No, no, it was, uh, it was the, it was the lucid sacred dreams. It was, <laughs> it was LSD. <laughs> that was my first, um, which was, and uh, it was intense. Um, it was fun though too, and but it was emotional. It was like mm -hmm. the whole gam gambit of emotions. Um, but when I came out the next day, I was like, all right, because that's a really, that's a, that's honestly like that's like a fourteen hour event. Oh, like yeah. You, you, yeah, it's like. So don't 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 yeah. do it in the morning on a work day. <laughs> exactly. That's what's so nice about mushrooms. It's like you know, 
six hours, but you know, two of it might be where you're incapacitated and the other four, you're just kind of feeling whatever you're feeling, which could be mm-hmm. in many cases, you're really good. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. Do you have a, do you, what about like cannabis? Do you yeah, I, I do. I do Delta eight fairly frequently. No, okay. no, no. Sorry, 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 sorry. No, Delta eight's the stuff that doesn't get you high. I do Delta nine fairly frequently. Um, okay. I have done like the real stuff, like actual smoking weed sure. or eating it in edibles and stuff like that. Uh, it, it doesn't. I don't do well with it, and it is yeah. especially don't do well with it if I'm drinking. Holy crap! I oh yeah, yeah I yeah. freak out. Uh, but then you know, I mean, if I'm just doing it by itself, you know, it makes it's funny because like within a few minutes, I'm giggling and then within a few minutes after that i'm horny and then within a few minutes after that i'm asleep like it just yeah that's the that's the thing i laugh a lot i get a boner and i go to bed like that's <laughs> yeah that's like a yeah that's, a, that's funny but yeah. yeah you know cannabis for me isn't like isn't the end all be all and there's been times in my life when i've been like i feel like i'm supposed to be enjoying this just with like the person that i project myself to be but it's not it's not really up there for me mm. but I, but some of my friends that's all they do they love it so you know but there is a I don't know. When I think of like the bring up Ramdas, for example, rest in peace, Ramdas. Died at eighty eight, all before all the madness of the, the world they were like they don't want to put Ramdas through what the world's about to go through. So he died like <laughs> right before all this past madness few years started. But that's what that's what libertarians say about Murray Rothbard, by the way. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, yeah, he's he's, a, he's 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 our guru, I guess. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was an economist, so, so not quite not quite the same thing, but yeah. <laughs> He died in like ninety five, right before right before the internet just blew uh, up everything. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> so you know he's like, it became um, the for him the journey was, is like you you reach a point where it is like you like you know I have friends that say this it's like you don't um, you don't have to take acid you don't have to take mushrooms you can become those drugs, and you can have aspects of those um, positive impact feel. Uh, impactful feelings in your own life naturally like a natural high like it's there um and, and he was saying that that for like that wasn't i want to say the word goal because i'm not a thousand percent sure he said that but he said that mm-hmm. that can be the journey for you and the example he would use is he you know he went out west to, or i guess east to india and um you know gurus and all this stuff and he gave them acid and the, 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 like these gurus kept taking more and more, more and he's like how are you not feeling the effects and he's like what the effects that these are giving me is what i what we always feel now some people call bullshit on that but i don't know i think there's something to it that hmm. you know i think of like Sel- salvador dali and he was like i I'm, i don't do drugs i am drugs now why would a salvador dali say that wow. well he was an artist he was the true he was the truest expression and like seemingly in every single thing that he did, like he was Salvador Dali, Dali. Like you see those pictures of him, like wearing like like crazy cool clothes, especially like for that day, walking down New York City with like a pipe, and he has a he has an ant eater as a pet that he's walking in the middle <laughs> of New York City. <clears throat> like that's an artist. Like that moment right there, that's him living his life. But that's an artist. So when Sa- Salvador Dali said something along the lines of. I don't do drugs. I am drugs. I think there's something to that. Mm-hmm. Um, so you said that you haven't done anything recently. Is that right? Yeah, I've been, well, I mean, in 2022, I don't think I've done anything in 2022. Yeah. No, yeah, it's been a few months. Yeah. So like, what would be the next thing you do? Like if you did want to seek, like, would you do like a major trip? Would you, I mean, I know of people who like microdose every day. Like that's just sort of part yep. of their, like they take it with their vitamins. Is that, yeah. Is that something that you would consider? Why are we not? I've, it's something I've done. Okay. I've experimented with it. But again, for me and my journey, I am interested on like in this idea of how long can I be like sober, completely sober, but still have moments where I feel high. I know that sounds mm. weird, but that's like cool. something I pursue. Um, but as far as like what I would do next, uh, I, th- it's waiting for me on the Big Island. They have Iowa, the Big Island. Of Hawaii. I live in Hawaii. I'm in the state of Oahu, Honolulu. The Big Island is actually called Hawaii, so it confuses people because they're like, "You're like you live in Hawaii." I'm like, kinda, yes, no. Like the state I do, but I don't live on the island of Hawaii, oh. so we just call it the we call it the Big Island. Yeah. Um, and on the Big Island, there's I know people that do ayahuasca trips, and I'm just waiting for the right. Mo- I'm gonna do that because I have never done 
uh, ayahuasca is one thing I haven't done, and I'm, I, I I think I I want to experience it. So cool. I'll probably do that next. Yeah. What a uh, what's sort of the medium of ingestion for mushrooms? Uh, I know that I know that there's like you can do it pretty much anywhere. Like you can smoke it and eat it and make a tea and yeah. grind it up into pills and all that stuff. Like what's the what's the best way to do um, it? I'm lazy, so I'll just I'll take like a stem. Like let's just say my finger right here is. Uh, skinny, uh, not skinny, but like a thick version of a mushroom. Um, I'll, if this is one mushroom, I'll break it into like say six little pieces, mm-hmm. and then I'll just put it in my mouth, swallow, and drink water because I just want to get it in and get it started. I don't want to. So I, I, I just, I'll, I'll take that. I'll take a bunch and I'll just like break them up. I'll eat them and I'll, and I'll take swigs of water to swallow. <laughs> That's what cool. I do. That's not bad. Pr- I mean, pretty simple. Yeah. Um, is it is it like uh <clears throat> does it is it just does it taste like a normal mushroom like do you chew it? I don't know I, so that's the thing I try not to chew so I try okay. to break them into small enough pieces oh, I see. to where I can just you can just swallow like a swallow. Pill so I do a lot yeah so I do a lot of swallowing and that works <laughs> that works so it's uh, not a you, gay joke do you kn- <laughs> <laughs> or maybe speaking it is. of which speaking of which you you I'm not I'm not gay but I but almost, my boyfriend is no I'm just kidding Keep yeah yeah right me. but my but. You did a tweet that I liked the other week, not understanding the context from which the perspective you are coming from. And you tweeted something along the lines of like, how disappointing is it that men run around like they wear shorts on the outside of their sweatpants? That was the tweet or something oh. like that. <laughs> and I liked it because I thought that it was, was funny. Like, yeah. that was a funny observation. I, I don't so, I don't understand straight men. So like <laughs> all of my friends, like I don't have a lot of gay friends. Like I've got um, my partner and um, yeah. it seems like most of his friends are trans men. And uh, what does that mean, though? Because it gets really. What's a, what's a trans man? Is that a, a lady? It's, it's a it's a, a former former lady. So yeah, that... it's someone who is who is a girl and is now a boy, basically. Okay. Okay. Um, gotcha. And so there's that. There's girls who I hang out with. I have like maybe one or two gay gay male friends. So I like I I understand straight men from the standpoint of like I hang out with them, but I don't ask them questions like, you know, do you. Well, and the other thing is, like, they're not they're not the ones who are out wearing sweatpants in public. But that's what I asked on Twitter. I asked, yeah. like, do, do straight guys, like, understand when they wear, like, a pair of gray sweatpants with boxers or no underwear or whatever? Like, do they get that? Like, that they're okay. just showing off their cock to everybody? Like, <laughs> Somehow I admit, so here's how I interpret it. And we talked about earlier, you put something out there and then you cut it. The, the, the receiver cuts it with their own reality. Here's an example yeah. of that. Somehow I read that tweet as, like, a person who see i had it backwards i had it in like a person wears a sweatpants because they're working out but over they but they put a pair of shorts over the sweatpants i thought that's what you're doing i thought it was like a comment on the cold someone else was saying that someone else uh, comment so i i put when guys wear sweatpants in public do they know what they're doing um and some of them thought i was making a fashion statement like oh my god that's why i liked it who would who would wear Uh, wear sweatpants in public Uh, that's why that's why i liked it and And, then i saw your reply and and i was like oh this is a gay thing (laughs) yeah well and since so many of my since so many of my followers are like you know conservatives uh they thought like oh yeah no you can only wear a suit like unless you're going to the gym and then then it's okay but like i'm like no 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 I didn't mean like, you know, do you wear blue jeans and khakis and, and sweatpants in public? <laughs> it's like, no, when you go out in public, are you, you're, you're swinging your dick out. Like, do, <laughs> do guys realize that they do that? And right. so what that tells me is that that guy at least didn't know that that's what he does if he wears sweatpants. Yeah, I was um, confused until I saw your follow tweet. And I was like, oh, I just I just like to tweet. Uh, on a, on a, 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 it, was like, it was a man making a comment and, yeah. as a gay man. And I'm like, oh, no, does he think I'm gay now because I like this? <laughs> no, I know you're not. Not that there's anything wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, oh, I just outed myself. But I wasn't in, to quote Jerry Seinfeld. You know? <laughs> What are we talking about? Oh yes, uh, I don't, I don't swallowing. Remember. So, so you like to, <laughs> yeah. so you like to swallow? No. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just mushrooms. Um, <laughs> and, and food, presumably. Yeah, only on Tuesdays. Uh, but yeah. do, do you fast? Do you do any other like spiritual? I have. Stuff? I've done. Yeah. So I um, I did a big fast with a group of people. It was fun. Oh, cool. It was it was a grape juice fast because grape juice. I don't know the details offhand, but as the story goes back, it's something with your lymph nodes and just to clean it out. And even like if you can fast for three days, 
and it re- like that's the timer yeah and a lot of things in your body that where, where, where the reset button just happens so like, three days is I when did... you stop feeling hungry um mm. yep. after three after three days fasting is super easy you can go a week without yep. even that's noticing what... it so the longest i've ever done was like close to a week probably like six mm. days um i don't know the exact hour number sorry yeah. folks that are sticklers um but yeah that's exactly what happened like the first couple of days was just pure torture and then after that it was this weird like i don't know my body felt like it was just like a weird energy it was weird like i was kind of weak but like i felt really good i felt like mm-hmm. stuff was happening have you ever done it i've done a five-day fast i think that's the longest i've yeah. ever gone yeah how what was the feeling like when you got over that hunger part what was going on yeah. I don't know, Conrad. I'm like I like I like I said earlier. I'm such a materialist that I don't I don't I don't recognize things like that. Fair it's enough. so it's so weird. Um, actually, that's one of the reasons that I started this podcast, and I haven't really yeah. been. I, I've kind of gone off off kind of gone off track on that. Was, you know, <laughs> trying to recognize magic when I see it, and mm. trying to identify my own emotions because, like, obviously I have emotions. Everybody does, but right. like, um. I just, I, I don't see them. I don't feel them in an identifiable way, if that makes sense. Yeah, uh, no, which may maybe I mean, you know, I like I like earlier I identified the the couple of fears that I have, which is an yeah. emotion, um, surrounding doing psychedelics, and uh, but that took work. Like I didn't just like know, oh yeah, I'm afraid, um, right. And I'm guessing that has to do with trauma or I don't know what, but. Um, we're all trauma filled. Yeah. Yeah. This conversation, this conversation has been a little trauma filled. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I feel you there, man. Um, but like just the idea of magic is interesting. And even if you're, the, you know, if you're a pure science individual who is 1000%, um, well, it's not a belief because it's based on your scientific, mm. uh, analysis that the big bang is, is 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 how this all happened because the footprint of the universe that they thought was there they found it and all, i understand all the arguments i'm slightly educated on it but just the idea that one little nothing somehow created everything that's pretty magical in its own right and yeah it might mm-hmm. we might be able to figure it out on some scientific terms if that's what it is or what was um but there's still like there's still like a mysterious, beautiful wonder even about that, you know? So I think magic's real. Yeah, totally. I mean, you just have to, you just have to look at the kind of cultural trends to see that magic's real. I mean, you know, I, I hate to, I hate to, you know, bring up politics, but like, you know, I mean, Trump got taken off of Twitter, not because he said anything particularly offensive, but because his tweets were magic. Like, he yeah, could they, say so, he could he could speak something into the universe and the universe would change. That is right. That's like the definition of magic. Yeah. And what's interesting about that and what we're experiencing now is it feels like to me anyways. And this is the first time I'm saying this out loud, so it might come across as just word garbage, mm-hmm. but it's been percolating in my brain. It seems like social medias and the, those different types of um, communication environments are feverishly working and have successfully in many ways returned to the legacy media format. And what I mean by that is this, for Twitter, for example, I open up my feed now and there's a million suggested tweets of Mm. people I don't follow, of topics that I don't care about, but Mm. things that I'm supposed to care about because that's where the world's at, right? Promoted tweets, things that, and then, you know, just check marks appearing. And I'm not saying every check mark is bad, but I'm saying just the fact that there's like this strong push to return to who is the authority yeah. on everything. And then there's us who are, who are just need to follow. And I think it's interesting because if social media came into society or culture or whatever, with the framework that it now exists under, it wouldn't have gotten popular. Why would I join a Twitter if I'm going to have certain, if I'm going to, with certain tweets, I'm going to lose like, the ability to have people retweet it or heart it, you know, they can only quote tweet like all these censorship things that are in place now are in direct opposition to what made this thing popular. But now that we're so ingrained to Twitter and Instagram and all these things and Facebook being part of our lives, it's like, it seems like the vast majority can't see that these, these companies, these uh, apps, these programs, these social media sites 
are a complete 180 of what yeah. they originally were. You know, Instagram and Twitter aren't the Instagram and Twitter of old. It's it's just fascinating to me to yeah. see it happening in real time. I've been on Twitter since 2009, 10, something yeah. like that. I mean, I've been on Twitter since before the retweet button existed, certainly before oh, wow. likes. I mean, Jack Dorsey, that this is why of the tech executives, Jack Dorsey is the one that I kind of trust. Mm. Um because he gets combative with Congress when he's dragged before them. I mean, you know, he's no longer the the CEO of Twitter. They're, they're completely right. they're they're completely bought and sold, bought and paid for now. Um, yeah. But Jack, like, he was opposed to the retweet button because he didn't like the idea of a of an echo chamber. Um, he was opposed to he was opposed to the like button because he liked the idea of conversation. He didn't like the ease of just clicking on a heart. Mm. Um, he was very resistant to those things. Um, I didn't know but, that. you know, I mean, with with supply and demand, like he kind of had to he had to flex to meet the You're demand for those monetize. things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so I don't necessarily hold it against him, but um, I liked that he was at least principled enough to not introduce those things without some without some pushback. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I just I, it's and then go to go back to Trump and the fact that he was it's just it's just weird to me still to this day that I mean I have my opinions on Trump and I you know the way I view politics in the scene is I just think it's two birds or just, yeah no yeah wait, wait, hold on what's the saying how do I not two wings this? on the same bird yeah two wings of the same bird yeah two birds of the same coin is what I meant to say. <laughs> thanks President Biden that's definitely actually it. I just I just put out I did my first ever uh, I just started a YouTube page finally and, yeah, uh, I saw your first video. Yeah, did you watch it? Uh-huh. You know, it's okay if you didn't. Okay, no, I, didn't. I don't know yeah. what you thought. Okay, but I did. Um, I that statement right there is I screwed up. I was talking about. I said uh, I was talking about the movie <coughs> no, no Country for Old Men, and I was talking about the Anton Shakur character Javier Bardem. For anyone that's not familiar with this, he's the one with the nail gun, right? Yeah, yeah, he's the one with the nail gun. He's the one that yeah. would walk around and he would make people call it, call the uh, call heads or tails on a coin. But in the in the video I did and I totally missed it is I said that he made people choose a coin. It's like no, he made people choose a side. But it was like it was already <laughs> up and it was like the one major blemish. I was like, fuck it. That's all right. <laughs> nobody nobody notices but you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and the one the, the the few people who do notice don't don't interact with them. Holy shit, they're just, yeah. just block them. That's that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um. So yeah, so old no country for old men. What what like inspired the video? I guess. You know, I, so, I guess I, you know, Anthony Bourdain is definitely, when we talk about heroes, influences, he's definitely yeah. one. I think he is yeah. for a lot of people, you know? I, he's and, one of the, like, three celebrities whose death made me cry. Right. Yeah, yeah, me too. Like, it was, like, a real impact. I was just thinking about this last night, actually, for some reason. I I, stum- I somehow stumbled into, you know, just, you know, YouTube autoplay. They, they Eventually, it switches over to something they want you to listen to. Mm-hmm. And uh, in this case... Um, I reverted back to an old Joe Rogan, like Joe Rogan, a 15 minute clip on him talking about Anthony Bourdain. And that's how I came, you know, but just the way that, you know, he's somebody um, with his show, the TV shows and his books and his writing and stuff like that. It, it seemed like and maybe it was all an act, but it seemed like he was trying to use the external surroundings of reality, these different places and show you these like 95 percent beautiful things that everyone can agree with and then just a little bit in in a very non-confrontational way you know find ways to weave in his own personal worldview which i viewed as a positive worldview so i don't think it was like it was like manipulation in a negative sense but to me that's what art is in a lot of ways you know art like netflix today like now to me hollywood is just it's really weird like it's it's not really weird it's pretty obvious to me that it's like I'm okay with an artist having an artist's opinion on world events who shouldn't have an opinion. Right. Mm-hmm. But to me, like the, uh, it's really changed where now the, the messaging, the political, uh, bullet point narratives, whatever that they have to get across that to me is so usurped any sort of the artistry on so much stuff that it's just really apparent. Um, now has Hollywood always been a tool to promote quote unquote agendas probably. Yeah. But to me, it's just like it's just like to me, like there used to be a requirement like where people could turn away and not watch and like dollars made sense. But I don't even know. Like, I feel like these companies like it, I don't I don't know anything about it, honestly, but it just seems like that um, making money in Hollywood isn't even the goal anymore. It seems like it's just whatever 
Silicon Valley goal is being pushed is how they're getting their money. And that's just what it is. And it doesn't matter what the public thinks. Have you thought about that at all? Yeah, certainly. I mean, Hollywood is just part of the mass media. It's not, it's not anything different. And it always has been like, I mean, if you look back at the fifties, sure. It was not the progressive agenda that it was pushing. It was the cold war agenda that it it was pushing, but it it was still pushing the, the agenda that the, government and media apparatus wanted them to push because they're part of the government and media apparatus and with social media i mean it's right there media it's it's just another form of media um it took it took a few years for them to completely join the the bandwagon of the mass media but if they were going to be successful um then they needed to do that well and that's why you know i mean now mark zuckerberg is calling for congress to regulate them um it's so that his competitors also have to toe the line that, that they've right. all decided that they're going to tow. <laughs> right. So I, I mean, I know that, uh, you know, I know that you're all in on cryptocurrency. I don't think that's changed, right? You're still. Yeah. I'm super, that's, decentralized. That's, yeah. It's, it's the future. Uh, that doesn't mean that it's not dangerous. I mean that right. the, the, the central banks of the world are going to be issuing their own cryptocurrency or currencies. And, right. you know, I mean, it's, so yeah, yeah. I mean, and and China's social credit score program is all on the blockchain, apparently. Yeah. Um. So it's not it's not it's not threat free, but it's definitely what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> so, but here's my question to you: then. How would you eat? Like, if you're selling Bitcoin, obviously decentralization decentralization is going to be the answer. But mm-hmm. in this specific case, what is the argument that you would use? To, to ease the, the worries of somebody who views, for example, and this is, I've heard, I've seen this a lot, so this is why I'm saying it, like this opinion, with the Canadian truckers mm-hmm. and the freezing of assets. Mm-hmm. And then people say, well, this is why we can't have cryptocurrency because that's a primary, primo example that if all funds are in some place that can be freezable, like a digital, uh, a digital realm, um, that they're clearly, at some point it's going to happen. It's inevitable. Like, with that absolute power, eventually someone will corrupt it absolutely. Um, how would you, what would be the explanation to explain that isn't actually what would happen if we shifted over to like Bitcoin as a yeah. primary, you know? Well, I think the governments will be able to make transac- transacting and investing and so on in crypto uh, difficult, um, maybe even prohibitively difficult for some people. Uh, but the blockchain exists whether you have the internet or not. Um, right. <clears throat> it's it's so global and so decentralized that it's not shut downable. The only thing that they can shut down are you know Coinbase and the the different exchanges. They might be able to get the wallet people to like you know add little bits of code to make it make it hard to transact. Although I, I don't know that that's possible. I, I don't know. I don't know what the technology is there. Um, right. But even, even if, even if they were to completely compromise the exchanges and the, and the, and the, you know, hard wallets and that sort of thing, um, all you need is that, is that private key. And if you, right. if you have that, then you can actually, you can do it with paper and pen. Um, right. Uh, Cause it's all just, it's all just encrypted, encrypted digits. It's not, right. it's not reliant on these centralized, uh, mechanisms. So I guess that that's where I, I would use the word concern because I'm ignorant to it. And this is, this is what I've logically from my limited understanding have concluded was like, you can, like you were saying, like with like, you know, hard wallets, private keys, like you could have, let's say you have a million dollars in Bitcoin and it's yours and they can't get to it. And it's like the decentralized aspect of it. But that point, like the choke points, of trying to get the money out like onto it. Like, is there, is there a way to be able to take money out of a a safe protected government? Can't get to it. Anyone can't get to it Mm -hmm. wallet, but then you actually want to use it in the real world. And then is there choke points where they can, at that point they can get their hands on it one way or the other. Or if your social credit is too low, you're not going to be able to make that trend, you know, stuff like the worst case scenario. I don't think so. I, uh, I don't know. They would have to, in order to make it, so to make it impossible is not something that they could do. Um, they would have to 
completely restrict your ability to access like VPNs and Tor and that sort of thing. Right. Um, you know, encrypted networks. Uh, and I mean, in even the most repressive regimes in the world, save maybe for North Korea, uh, in North Korea, they, you know, they rely on flash drive drops, um, <laughs> rather, rather than, rather than VPNs. But, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think okay. there would be a way to fully restrict that. Uh, you know, I mean, if they get creative enough, um, creative dissidents will need to come up with creative solutions to the problem. So you might be, right. you might be, you know, SOL for a little while, but yeah, because web web 3.0, I understand. I, you know, I have some friends that are, are very deep and very intelligent and. Some are developing, you know, coins for the metaverse and all this stuff, and it's like, wow, I think this is like Blade Runner. Uh, <laughs> um, but you know, uh, one thing like Theta, for example, like the Theta and the, the Theta video network, and it's a decentralized, um, I guess, like streaming service of how I understand it, or cool. like videos. And to me, it's like, okay, that makes sense because you know, YouTube. We've seen in the last few years, like if you if you touch on a few topics, if you use a few hot words, mm -hmm. like you're going to get flagged and eventually you're going to lose your account. Whereas if Theta is this, it's like a central point where you can get access to videos, but every single one is decentralized in its own ownership level. That to me is a positive version of Web.30 in terms of like people being able to protect their content and not being able to have it censored because it's, you know, it has all those things in place to protect it. Yeah. So, I mean, I view, I you know, I'm... Like, I, I'm so tentative. Like, I'm invested in cryptocurrency as we speak. I'm not pretending that I'm not. Like, and I see it, but then I do get, like, there is those small paranoias. I mm -hmm. worry about choke points. Like, I guess just how I think. And then, that's why I presented it to you, because I know you're into it. And uh, you know, that's one of the, the common arguments I've been seeing over social media lately is this idea that this is why we can't have it. And the Canadian trucker uh, freezing of assets is the primary example. Yeah, I mean, if the if the Canadian truckers were using Bitcoin and it were sitting on Coinbase or Gemini or one of the one of the exchanges, then yeah, they they could they could definitely do that. I mean, it's no it's no different than a bank. Um, in fact, right. Coinbase I think is registered like as just a bank. Um, right. So yeah, that's that's definitely a threat. Uh, on the other hand, if you keep your nose clean, I mean, that that's the thing. I don't I don't really I don't really do. I don't really believe in street protests. I think that that is right. Pro, so street protesting with some exceptions, like I mean, maybe the trucker thing was an exception. I don't know. Um, street protests are a tool for people who are sympathetic to the regime to convince the regime that it's time to make the change that the regime was already going to make. Um, mm. So the civil rights movement, uh, heroic as it was, ushered in something that was inevitably going to happen. Um, right. It didn't, maybe protesting made it happen a little bit faster in some places. Uh, and great. I mean, you know, it, it's, it's great that it happened. Um, desegregation is an unqualified good. Uh, the, the fact that people aren't getting lynched today is an yeah. unqualified good. Um, but I don't think that necessarily street protests were the reason that that happened. And so for those of us who are dissidents against the regime, I, I don't think that, you know, I don't think that like marching in front of city hall to, to protest the vaccine mandate that your city Im implemented or God, you're in Hawaii. You'll have a statewide vax mandate of some sort. Don't you? Yeah. I saw the, I saw the other day. Um, they're like 49 out of the 50 States are going to be dry. And I'm like, Oh, I know which one is the one. And I was like, yep, <laughs> oh fuck me. God. I live in, I always find myself in the most, it's crazy, man. Like I'm walking around outside. It's 80, 85 degrees, super nice out. And you just, you know, people at a park, uh, it's it's pretty split like it's not everyone but yeah it's like what are we doing here this isn't even this is anyways we don't have to go down that road but <laughs> well i'd like to i'd like to know what your experience okay. has been like there because i mean you, yeah. you you do live in like the most repressive state as far as i'm as far I as i know I do. Um, so are they are they like mandating it outside and everything no so that's people's personal choice which mm -hmm. is why i'm so fascinated by like people's <laughs> yeah. like where's your mind at 
and uh, you know i i have a um, i have a great hairdresser uh when i got to hawaii i was excited to be like yeah i can finally get decent haircuts again and she's somebody who is probably completely opposite on just about everything i think but we still have good conversations and we're friends you know shocker right <laughs> she doesn't fuck up my hair when i you know when i state my opinion um oops sorry uh so i kind of use her as a barometer <laughs> whether she knows it or not because so i get in there and you know you're waiting and she's talking to her customer and then she's going to talk to me and uh I, I i view her as like the pulse of the state like this is what the mainstream thinking is and, and um they just feel and now that war is here uh and they can kind of brush you know the focus can shift to that and people can kind of it looks like that people are going to quietly just like pretend things just magically change now because of war and everything's going to end of the past two years no questions asked no observations no looks into wait this didn't make sense that didn't make sense for many people not for mm -hmm. everyone of course um i walked in there and she wasn't wearing a mask and her customer wasn't wearing a mask and to be honest i like i walked in throwing it on just out of respect because i don't always want to fight that fight <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah so i was like whatever it's not worth it i want to get a haircut and uh they were off and I, then i felt stupid and then i was like oh wow so i took it off and the first time i got a haircut when i got back you know it was full masks and everything so the culture, in my opinion, from what I'm observing, is it's been heavily like, I'll give you like Kyrie Irving for the New Jersey Nets basketball player who can't play in Brooklyn right now because of the vaccine city mandate. But uh, if you're a player from an opposing team that isn't vaccinated, you can play. <laughs> right? Yes. Oh, that's absurd. Is, yes, it is. Now, that bit of information has been out there since the beginning right but it isn't until the last couple weeks that it's gone mainstream and became an official sports talking point even though that information has been there the entire time mm. but for some reason only <clears throat> now in the past few weeks these sports talking heads that are on 24 7 365 always arguing suddenly now they're allowed to bring this up as a point I mean, you talk about pro protesting and it doesn't matter that I think of that because it's like now the talking point is well, we're the New York City. The hope is that they'll be able to get Kyrie Irving back for the playoffs because the vaccine mandate will be dropped by the spring and he'll be able to play in home games. You know, and so here's what I noticed. This is what the, 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 the thing that kind of clicked in my brain as I started to see this conversation happening on sports shows. Um, I just think most people don't actually care whether stuff is logical or not they're just going to do what they're told to do and for most people in the state yeah. of hawaii or not most but for many people in the state of hawaii they were told that you could die or spread a dangerous disease unless you wear this mask even mm -hmm. if no science supported it right and that's just what they did because they want their life to get on and they want blah blah, blah all the things so a week later when they take the masks off because the CDC has lowered the whatever, blah, 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 blah. Like they're just following the rules and it just is what it is. I don't think it's yeah. even a more, a, I think for most people, it's not a moral thing. I think most people just, because most people seem to be decent people. And, yeah. and then and it comes down to the old, like, well, if I wouldn't do that, why would power hungry people have power hungry plans and desires? That just seems impossible because I'm a good person and I view right. everything through my own worldview. So they must be decent somewhat too. You know, that's what we all do. So, in Hawaii, the double way back to Hawaii is the it was the most restrictive state in the most beautiful area in which mm. health is almost like natural with how much sun there is um, and the beautiful weather and everything. Um, but it isn't until people are just going on with the program, with the plan until they're told otherwise. And I don't see it changing. I don't see it yeah. like. Um, but I did see the fear seems like and that was the point with my hairdressers the fear and the way they're viewing it seems to be at the lowest state it's ever been in these past few years but just coincidentally their new focus is what we are all supposed to be focused on now which is war in ukraine yeah you know 
just in time. Just perfect timing, James. <laughs> perfect timing that they're when Western civilization is ready to move on from COVID, theoretically, there just happens to be a new war to mm-hmm. capture our attention, our emotions, and our energy. Yeah, sure. Well, that's that. I mean, <clears throat> um, it's I mean, you know, it's a congressional election year. The Democrats are poised to just get absolutely slaughtered. You would and, think. And if that's all legit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, in order to prevent that, they're going to have to do two things. They're going to have to declare victory over COVID. And you can't do that with restrictions in place. That's clearly right. not a victory. Um, yeah. And they're going to, I mean, there is nothing that, there's nothing that guarantees the regime stay, the regime in power stays in power. I, I shouldn't call it the regime. The regime is sort of all of them. Like that's not that's not just Biden. Uh, but right. the, the you know the party in power that is going to stay in power if there's a, a military conflict. That's yeah. how George W. Bush got reelected. If he if he actually got reelected in two thousand four. Right. Um, uh, and so that's I mean yeah that's that's what this is all about. That that at least in the United States I, I do not I do not downplay the war in Ukraine that that is definitely something that's happening it's something that's real um, the Ukrainian government and the Biden family have they go way back they're <laughs> they're right. buddies um, so you know that's obviously who we're gonna stand with because you got to stand with somebody hashtag stand with Ukraine um, right. but uh, and that's the thing is it's the morality yeah it's like our morality is planned out like you know like i was saying with social media like you, you go on the the trending page of social mm-hmm. media let me do it i'll do it right now as i'm talking about this I, i'm gonna read it out in real time yeah let's see if we can guess what's trending <laughs> on social media on sunday february 27th at 10 a.m hawaii time east coast time 3 p.m so hopefully you guys even though you're hearing this later hopefully if you look back on your sunday you had a good sunday and on this is no joke the first trend is Armageddon. <laughs> oh damn! Wow. Yeah, that's way trend. more dramatic than I expected it to be. <laughs> yep. The second, the second. Okay, then there's a promoted American Idol. American Idol. Yep, yep. Then here's the next one. High alert. Okay. And then, of course, since I'm in Hawaii, COVID nineteen news and updates for Hawaii. Uh, Alex Jones. <laughs> Ukraine latest battle rages on the streets. Um, Senator Tom Cotton because he won't hate Trump in this one moment. And then <laughs> this is a weird one. Hope po- uh, Hope Putin. What does that mean? Bill Gates. And then the, yeah. So <laughs> wow. that's my trend. Yeah. Mine, What's your say? I'm curious. Mine is a little bit a little bit less. Oh shoot. There it goes. Okay, so I've got Ukraine agrees to hold talks with Russia at the Belar- Belarusian border. Positive. Which is good. Uh, actually, I was ju- just before we started. I was interviewing one of my foreign policy guys. Um, yeah, uh, Kyle. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's looking like the the by the time this airs, the war could be winding down, which is really which is really promising. Uh, I've got so. this. I got the same American Idol ad as you. I've got John Stewart, uh, George Carlin, um, mm. two of my favorite comedians. I love. George I wish Carlin. George Carlin. Wish George Carlin was alive. Uh, He's another one that was taken away before. Yeah. You know. And then, of course, COVID nineteen news and updates for Minnesota. Uh, John <laughs> John Stewart is the he's the regime's limited hangout this time. Um, he's the one who he's the one who gave Stephen Colbert per, uh, permission to and every and by extension everybody else just to, to talk about the lab leak theory, which now uh, right. apparently is just sort of the mainstream position. Like there's no there's no, the, the the idea that someone ate a bat or whatever uh, uh, is just uh, sort of is just sort of not not even talked about anymore. The lab leak theory is just sort of, you know, it's not, it's not only is it like not racist anymore to talk about, but like, it's sort of mainstream. Um, and you know, it's, you know, it's frustrating. And I will use it frustrating cause I'll admit it does get to me at times. Um, it's like, wait a second. Do these, the same, the same, uh, posi- the same people in these same, like these same positions, these same jobs were saying Wuhan bat as if it was gospel Mm. and you took it at face value. And then the leak, like you said, the permission was given to change the narrative to a lab leak, because that seems to be more circumstantial with evidence to to be be the true story. And then they go with that as absolute gospel in many ways. And I'm like, do you not see how they're just like, like when they come out with something, they're presenting it as fact every single time. And you don't question their motives or purpose. 
Like, it's just weird to me. I don't know. Yeah. Well, talk about magic. I mean, that's comedians are mm. magic. They're the magicians of, of today. I mean, they're, they're, they're wizards. Right. They, they can say something and make your entire worldview change with like just a, just a sentence, you know, mm-hmm. John Stewart gets on, he, it's, I mean, it's, it's like hypnotism. He, he, through his words, he affects your emotions and cognitive reactions to the the thing that he's talking about and that literally rewires your brain um right it's sure i mean it's not like he's it's not like he's casting a spell and making you levitate or you know (laughs) uh forcing you to do his will i mean uh, although i mean that's a that's a little bit that's a little bit like what it is whether it's whether it's john stewart saying the lab leak is now okay to talk about or uh I don't know if this ever gained gained traction. Who was it that the head of the FDA saying that masks were more effective than than a vaccine would be um, before the vaccine <laughs> came out? That was that was kind of ridiculous. Uh, and I think that's what I mean. Like, it's ridiculous. But yeah, but like, like that's what they were trying to do. They were trying to cast a spell so that people would continue doing the 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 anonymizing, covering of their faces. Right. Which and that's I guess that's like and maybe not so much as comedians because I think many comedians in many ways understand this but they're also just trying to there's nothing more beautiful than like uh, something comes into you through laughter uh mm-hmm. in my opinion but yeah. like with the with the fda for example it's like you present yourself as the, the tour de force of knowledge and you're selling masks are better than the vaccine and you're doing it with a straight face knowing full well six months when they are logistically ready to do the thing they were always planning on doing and pretending like it might or might not be like i still remember i'm telling you dude i still remember like it was like early spring like may of the start of everything way back two years ago and the front page of cnn is like uh it was one of the cities that was being ravaged with the riots and there, there was just like one one still frame shot on the cover of cnn of a dude wearing one of those full-on um, military grade mm-hmm. masks of uh you know if like um whatever i can't like a, right like now. a gas mask type thing yes a gas with the, mask with, the, with the with the with the things right yeah, and then yeah. the headline was is will we ever have a vaccine for covid oh, and Lord, it's like that's pure fear creation yeah. like i should like me stupid conrad shouldn't have, been able, <laughs> shouldn't, have, shouldn't have been able to predict perfectly the timeline that played out with the vaccine yeah and it has nothing to do with it with it being good or bad whatever but just the fact that I understood the time frame that was going to play out no matter what, it's a bit interesting. That's all I'm saying. And and talk <laughs> about rewiring the brain. That's a that's a combination of the two narratives that we were supposed to be paying attention to, the right. the masks and COVID, and then also the um, the you know protection against the fumes and pepper spray and tear gas and all that stuff that was going <laughs> right. on in the riots. That's true. That's magic, right? That's yeah. ma- like that 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 picture, that headline that's painting a story that's trying to t- t- tap into our subconscious and, and, uh, and but, but to go back to Russia or yeah, Russia and Ukraine for a second. Mm-hmm. One thing I did notice in my haircut yesterday was, and I've seen this. Oh, I'm glad you remembered. <laughs> I'm glad you remember we were talking about that. Holy cow. Yeah. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> thanks for, thanks for, thanks for keeping track of my show for me. Conrad. <laughs> <laughs> Props. She, um, you know, <coughs> you know, she was saying something I full heartedly agree with, which is, um, why are we still having wars? <laughs> for real you know and i think i think and i think a lot of people have have this interesting this 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 conflict i don't know are we allowed to call it a war what did your what did your um previous guest say yeah it's a war is, yeah it's a war it's okay a war. yeah well it's not um, a war, it's not a war that the united states is engaged in but it's definitely a war right but it's a two. war that's happening yeah um all right so what was i gonna say oh totally totally uh why are they still just, why are wars still happening why are, yeah, uh, yeah yeah um yeah, but again, my follow-up point, it's compl- it was there. It's completely gone. <laughs> I wish it was. Oh, this is what it was. Is this the first war that we're having where everyone from all walks of life are in real time through their own perspective of reality, whether it's everything's fake, everything's real, mm-hmm. everything is blah, blah, blah. Like every single person, it feels like, that is engaged in social media and, and any sort of thing, like everyone in real time, is live streaming in many ways commentary on this on a war have we had that is it been this where like 
three seconds after the the conflict started, you have 25 different takes from their own little thought bubbles that are being promoted as absolute fact and how you're supposed to view this. And then, yeah. like, it's like, you know, this, am I making sense? This is so. The unique factor about this war is that <clears throat> uh, Russia was such a big thing in the anti-Trump propaganda. And right. I, I, I use the word propaganda there neutrally. You don't have to like Trump to understand that this was propaganda. Absolutely. Um, and the the whole reason that Trump was impeached the first time he was impeached, I don't remember if he was impeached twice or not. They might not have gotten through the second time. But uh, the whole reason he was impeached was because of investigating the Biden family's dealings with Ukraine. Right. Um, and so with Biden in power, the good guy has to be Ukraine and the bad guy has to be Russia. And right. um, so you get this comic book style conflict where you've got a villain and you've got a, you've got a hero. Mm. Um, but the hero, of course, in the 21st century, heroism is victimhood. Like you, you, you know, if you, if you are like a strong, manly Superman type, you're not a hero. You, you're an oppressor. Uh, right. If you are an oppressed person, or class of people, then you are the actual, you know, protagonist in this sort of post postmodern um, state of, of cultural cultural state. Uh, and so the way that the way that you do that is so you have the villain Russia, the actual oppressor, uh, oppressor, which is led by this like you know dude who likes to ride bears and take his shirt off and whatever all the other memes uh, were yeah. about, who also happened to be in cahoots with Trump. Um, rightly or wrongly stated uh <clears throat> trump being another manly man villain oppressor right. type uh against these just poor unfortunate ukrainians um who now granted russia is the aggressor here they are they are acting in completely unjust ways towards ukraine um right but you, you you have to have history that goes back longer than a week to understand that like there are there was a lot of stuff, uh, all of it you, the United States government's fault that led up to this, yeah, um, no. <laughs> in order to fully understand the the context. I mean you know, the when you have NATO, which is you know headed up by the United States and um, funded also by other nuclear armed countries, all of whom are hostile towards Russia, and um, NATO is continuously for every president since the fall of the Soviet Union, when they were promised that NATO wouldn't be expanding any farther, uh, continuing to expand like new countries are added every couple of years. Um, right. and now they're in talks with Ukraine to add them to NATO. Um, right. yeah, I mean, it is understandable. It's not just, it's not, it's not a good state of things. It's, I mean, I'm, I'm anti-war. I'm anti-every war. Yeah. Uh, so I'm anti this war too, but like you know, if you put yourself in this in the in the shoes of Vladimir Putin, who is largely still living in the Cold War because that's where he cut his teeth, and right. um, he understands that the entire Western world is hostile towards him. Right. Um, you kind of have to understand that. You know, I mean, like, put yourself in in Donald Trump's shoes five years ago. Let's say that, you know, the United, the, the USSR had won the cold war and NATO fell and, uh, you know, Gorbachev had told George HW Bush, okay, like, this is great. We can be trading partners and, you know, I'm not going to expand my empire any farther than it already is. And then all of a sudden, you know, 2020 rolls around and now Mexico is part of the, uh, is part right. of the Warsaw Pact. And now they're talking about making Canada part of it too. I mean, what would you right. do if you were the president of the United States uh, with, with this, the, 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 the USSR continuing to expand for 30 years? Yeah. I mean, it's just, well, look, 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 what we did to Cuba. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. so I don't, I don't justify it. I don't think that it's good that Putin has invaded Ukraine. Um, I wish that, I wish that negotiations had continued to keep Ukraine out of NATO. Um, but it is what it is. Yeah. And now it's looking like peace talks are, are underway. So I hope that hopefully by the time this is yeah. released, this is all like we're just in just a yeah. celebration and yeah. the world has come together. And we're all singing <laughs> Kumbaya and we're all tripping on ayahuasca. And that just it's the whole brand new era of humanity. <laughs> oh, all right, Conrad, if you 
if I, yeah. if I, if someone came up to you and said, Hey, I hear you have a podcast. What's your podcast about? What do you, what do you tell them? Uh, my podcast is I just, um, you know, there's a lot of people in the world who feel like they've awakened from something, mm-hmm. some sort of slumber, some <clears throat> sort of programming, some sort of something. And they've made a you know, vast life changes. They're on different journeys. And, uh, as a, as a, a naturally inclined investigative person who likes to learn about people it was a natural fit along with half of america to start a podcast a few years back you know um it's just called conrad um it's not a pure ego thing maybe like 10 percent, maybe 100 i don't know but no it's called conrad because in the military when i because i was in the military many moons ago um you're known by your last name which is gardipi right so by giving the name by just using my name conrad my first name it was kind of like again it was like just a personal like foot in the ground moment of this is who i actually am not what i came out of and that was just like a nice sharp way to do it and then um but you know i like my last episode um i invited my friend a good friend on who's a co-host of another youtube channel called the tartarian truthers and they focus on Australia because they're in Australia and there's a lot of weird inconsistencies that just timeline wise don't really make sense. Like just even like a small example uh, is, you know, the, the story goes and what's taught and I learned this from them to reconfirm backed up my American you know, education understanding of Australia is uh, like prisoners were kicked out in mass of England to, to to populate this continent, but as soon as they get there, they started building prisons, these beautiful structures that are known as prisons and, and asylums. Mm-hmm. It just doesn't make sense. So you leave, you leave a place, and then the first thing you do is you guys all get together, and then you make your new prisons and your new home. It just doesn't make sense. Anyways, so I don't want to go too deep in that because I understand that's not what this is. But I like to bring on people with different perspectives, yeah. and I don't necessarily have to agree with them, but what you what I think I help do is I, I show in a different light that a lot of these people that are made out to be your typical stereotypical mainstream version of a Trump racist, you know, the the thing, the thing that yeah. we all are expected to believe of these different archetypes. I try to show that these are not these are regular people that are just on their own journey chasing after their own thing. And so that's that's what I do. And uh, my YouTube page, I amped it up a little bit and uh, I changed it to I am two capital letters i am conrad and i could go into all of that um with neville goddard and all that stuff but we're at the end so I maybe you should do maybe you should do, that. <laughs> maybe you should do a video on that because you I probably will yeah great you're you're one of the few people i know who can monologue uh i'm oh. i'm i'm awful at that um i need it i need someone to be bouncing ideas off of uh, i can't yeah. just I'm really bad at just speaking off the top of my head. Uh, I've done two solo episodes, and to my, in my opinion, they were both kind of disasters. But uh, and even <laughs> that, even that, like I had, I had questions for myself written down so I could like answer right. them. Um, <clears throat> so I appreciate your interview shows. I love your solo episodes as well. I Thank definitely you. recommend everybody check out Conrad, uh, either on your podcatcher or on YouTube or both. Are the are the yep. Are they are they going to be different episodes on YouTube than from? So, yeah. So the YouTube, like I will be posting every. Um podcast episode moving oh, forward great but the youtube page isn't just my podcast i'm also like you like that one video i'm starting more documentary style projects mm-hmm. visually inclined and there's going to be all sorts of things on there it's not just that because i'm just i'm trying to move into the next uh, phase of being what it means to be like um yeah just an artist <laughs> cool awesome well Thanks, i'll make man. sure to link to all of that uh in the show notes and i really appreciate you coming on to yes, chat with fun. me again um, yeah, maybe, maybe so I'll, I will let you know when I have my first trip and then I'll come on your show and talk about it. That's perfect. That'd, that'd right. be so much fun. Cool. Awesome, Thanks a lot. Man. I'll talk to you soon. Yeah. All right. Peace.